film was a great success, beyond our expectation. It brought along some questions, comments. We decided it's time, a year later, to put together this little update to answer some of those questions and comments. Some people have questioned honey locust's ability to fix nitrogen. For us, it works. That's all that really counts. We used it in the first orchard because that's what we had when we planted. But there's other ones we've used. Black locust, Russian olive, seaberry, carragana. Try to get a yield out of them if possible, like seaberry will give you a yield. Uh, Autumn olive will give you, or gumi will give you a yield. And if not, we've used these as living stakes, living supports for grapes and soon to be kiwis. They're not wasted space, they're very, very useful plant. There have been a lot of comments about the use of plastic in the permaculture orchard. This block here was planted in 2008 without plastic, and you see the results. In the film, we started with the use of mulch. It took 100 cubic yards at the scale we do it, and 100 cubic yards is quite a lot of work, and you got to find it. This block was planted the year after that one in 2009, and we did use plastic. You can see the results. So it's up to you to decide which way you want to do it. We've got other comments. How come it's just fruit trees? What about nuts? We got nuts. We've got nuts on nuts. We got chestnut, walnut, hazelnut, oaks. There's a whole bunch of different nuts. Japanese walnut, black walnut. Yes, we do use walnuts and, and different nuts, but they just haven't started to produce yet. Nut trees fit in the trios the same like a fruit tree. Some of them may be larger than a fruit tree, but put them in the same way. So sequence them next to the nitrogen fixer. With time, you'll have a nice production and a varied production from the different nuts. 2013, when we shot the permaculture orchard film, was a year of great abundance. This year, 2014, not so abundant. In fact, quite dismal in production. And what we do have as fruit are really low quality. The insects have looked and, and found the last few fruit that are out there and have really attacked it pretty hard. Having the diversity and the biodiversity in insects and plants really tends to set up the permaculture orchard as something that will over-pollinate. Over-pollination really results in setting too much fruit, normally 12% fruit set uh, in the number of blossoms. So 12 blossoms out of 100 is enough for commercial crop. Last year we probably had 20 to 25 percent fruit set. And unless we went in and thinned by hand, because we don't want to thin chemically, we would have to thin vigorously to reduce the fruit set. So that's an added work you may want to consider. Instead what happens is the trees alternate from one year to the next. Not a great situation where customers are expecting a regular production. So we're still learning. This winter we'll be pruning a lot harder, uh, pruning leaving a lot less branches and a lot less fruit buds so that we don't risk as much having an over pollination and too high of a fruit set. Another question, do we graze poultry? Do we run animals? Yes, we do. You don't see it now in the lanes, but we will. Our chicks are small right now. We can let them graze the grass and we can raise the pen or allow them to come out and graze under the trees as well when there's fruit to pick up. Do the poultry sometimes eat other plants? Yes, they do. In fact, oddly enough, one of their favorite is the honey locust leaves. <laughs> so that's not a bad thing that they use the honey locust as some browse. They don't usually defoliate unless when we tried to do lettuce, that's not a good one to have with the animals going through. But most other plants, it works quite well. This winter we had our coldest winter in 20 years actually. And it was a lot of voles, a lot of vole pressure. So we found a lot of the vole pressure, the cold, and deep snow. So we ended up getting vole damage above our guard. So I'd suggested in the film a foot and a half 
the height of the guard, I would switch that to two feet because we had enough snow that we had some voles actually girdling above the top of the guard because there was two and a half feet of snow and they operate under the snow. So they went in above the guard and girdled trees. Another comment, multi-grafted trees in the orchard, is that a good idea? Multi-grafted means on one apple tree, for example, you can have five or 10 different cultivars grafted on. That's a great idea. Even if you only have one tree, you will still get very good pollination and therefore you'll have good fruit production. You may want to consider grafting same harvest date fruit, but if you only have a few trees, absolutely go with it. Are you going to do it on the whole orchard? It's probably better to just plant single cultivars, different ones rather than many cultivars on one fruit if you're going to have a lot of fruit trees. Marketing and how we sell with our U-Pick model. We sell with a members only U-Pick. I like the idea of having members. We can limit how many people we allow from one year to the next. It works by a yearly membership. Members pay a set fee, $55 a year this year. And in that it includes 20 pounds of free fruit. Anything extra is sold at between a dollar and two dollars a pound depending on the fruit. Membership gives us a chance to get to know our members, spend the time with them, we can educate them, we can get to know them, and it becomes more of a big family than a business. Experiment with plants from outside your zone. These wonderful cup plants, zone three, we're in zone five. Great idea to go with hardier plants. Last winter, we had a test winter, minus 28 was the coldest we've had in 25 years. These peaches, zone six, we're in five. Didn't like it, died right to the ground. Try, but don't rely on it. A permaculture orchard is a long-term thing. What do you do in the meantime? How do you make any money? Well, you grow annuals, whether it's melons or whether it's cucumbers. You can grow in the first years crops that will give you a yield and be profitable from the first year if you put enough vegetables. So do that. Put in annuals in the first three years at least while waiting for your trees, shrubs to mature. For your project, you're gonna need a lot of plants. That can be expensive. How do you get around that? Well, multiplying your own. It's easy, and we'll show you how in an upcoming film. But in the meantime, let me just show you with this little one, Egyptian onion, how easy it is to multiply them. So one head on one stalk gives me six big bulbs, and then there's a secondary stalk which has another 15 at least smaller bulbs. Each one are just dying to get into the ground. So let's put some in. Just take off a bulb here. So you got a bulb, a little bit of greenery, and let's put it in. So here's one we put in last year. Just a little bulb like this gave us, gave us that plant. So we just take our bulb, find the hole in the plastic, and that was from an annual put in the year before. Just there's one, find a second hole, pop it in, and there's two. That's it. Maybe you're in areas that won't grow apples because it's too warm. So the further south from us, quite a bit further south, what can you grow? Can you still grow fruit in a permaculture orchard planting? Certainly. There's lots of fruit that will grow very well a lot further south, even into the tropics, obviously. Think of peaches. Uh, think of the Mediterranean climate. So you have figs and olives, grapes. Look at other things. We're talking apples because that's what's the dominant fruits in our area. But look what grows in your area and grow that and add that to your trios. So wherever you are, there are fruit that will grow. In fact, as you go further south, you can grow a much bigger diversity of fruit than we can grow. I'd love to grow the nice, delicious kiwis, but we can't grow those here. So if you can, maybe send me a box one day. So that was just a little bit of an update based on comments and what we couldn't cover in the film. And there was a lot of other things we couldn't cover in the film, but that gives you a good idea. I really think you're starting to see that this orchard or the model of it is still a work in progress. We're still learning, we're still adjusting, we're still finding new things happening. Your area, different things work and work with it. So 
wherever you are, adapt it to your environment. The principles are the same. The idea of the trios, the grocery store, the multi-levels, all that, those are principles and they'll work wherever you are. So work with it, adapt it to your area, ask around, look around and enjoy the progress and the whole journey of discovering what will work and what won't work. <laughs>